Hi, this is Jonathan Marks, and I'm here today with Dr. Stephen Ferrone, Distinguished Professor of Psychiatry at SUNY Upstate Medical University and a member of the board of APSAR, the American Professional Society of ADHD and Related Disorders. He's going to be giving a presentation at the upcoming meeting of APSAR in January 2016 about new studies in genetics and ADHD and the possible creation of new medicines based on those findings. Steve, can you tell us more about your discoveries? Sure. Well, for many, many years, uh, myself and others have been searching for genes that predispose people to having ADHD. It's a very difficult search. It turns out that the solution to the problem of finding genes was in getting large enough samples so that we had enough statistical power to actually find these genes. So what we did, me and a uh, group of people from around the world, we gathered together a consortium. An international consortium now consists of over 100 people from 14 countries and five continents that are studying the genetics of ADHD. We pooled our data into a very, very large genome-wide association study. That means that we study the entire human genome looking for genes, or I should say DNA variants, pieces of DNA that put people at risk for having ADHD. Right now we have about 17,000 ADHD people in this big experiment along with 95,000 controls. So it's really the largest experiment in ADHD ever, ever to be, have, have been done. Now what's really exciting about this year is that finally after many years of, of doing these genome-wide studies, we can finally say for certain that we have detected loci in the genome that are what we call genome-wide significant, meaning that we're very, very sure that they are pointing to genes that are associated with ADHD. Uh, we think we have between five and eight genes that we can be sure of that. We're, we're actually finalizing the analysis now. Uh, by the APSAR meeting, I'll be able to present the, the final results. And so far, the genes that we've discovered are quite interesting because they're pointing to novel pathways that haven't been considered before. So for example, everybody knows about the dopamine system in ADHD or the norepinephrine system in ADHD. These are well-known biological pathways that have been implicated by the treatments for the disorder. And we're now implicating biological pathways, for example, that are involved in synaptic plasticity in the development of the brain. Um, these are genes that are involved both very early on uh, when the brain is developing from, the thing, from being at the fetal stage to up, up through young adulthood, and also involved in learning and memory and the remodeling of, of synapses. We hope in the long run, that discovering these new genes and new biological pathways will give us new insights into how medications might be developed to target very specific problems that are occurring in the ADHD brain. So it's quite exciting, um, exciting days for the people who have studied the genetics of ADHD. Great. So I really encourage everyone on the line here to join us at the APSARD meeting, which is January 15 to 17 in Washington, D.C. at the Mandarin Oriental Hotel. And you'll be learning from Dr. Ferrone along with others about this new and exciting research on genetics and ADHD. Thanks for listening.